Are you tired of buying multiple copies of a single player game for your entire family to play on their own accounts? Or perhaps you want more direct control over what you buy for your kids? Well, this is the new revamped Steam family sharing system, and yes, it works on Steam Deck as well. Welcome back to the Steam Deck Masterclass, Volume 15. This is all about family sharing. Yes, it's a general Steam feature and people are going to say that I'm baiting because I'm talking about something that's technically not just Steam Deck stuff, and my response to that is, it's a Steam feature, therefore it's a Steam Deck feature. So family sharing recently got revamped and I was about to make a video on family sharing. Good thing the change happened when it did. So what does family sharing offer you? Well, it offers you the ability to share copies of games with your entire family. How it works now basically is all games and all accounts are put into a single family share pool. We're going to use this basic example of three different people. And let's say it's like a potluck. Everyone brings to the table different games. Let's say person A has Helldivers, person B has Dragon's Dogma 2, and person C has Bellatro. Anyone in this family group can play any of these three titles, but only one person can play one game at a time. So in this example, only one person has Helldivers. That means there's only one copy to pass around, and you have to share it around. And because of course there's only one copy, you can't play with each other. Same deal with every other game. But if say, person A and person B were to have Helldivers 2, now you guys have two copies of Helldivers in the family pool, meaning two people can play at a time. Of course in this example, one person still wouldn't be playing Helldivers 2. And of course, if all three of you guys buy your own copies of Helldivers, then, you know, obviously you guys can play with each other. In my opinion, family sharing is best with single player titles. Titles like, yes, Dragon's Dogma 2 or Bellatro. And of course, like with anything else, there are some stipulations. But before we talk about that, if you like this video or any other video I've made, please like, subscribe, and spread the good gospel of high-tech lowlife. Spreading the good gospel of high-tech lowlife will let the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing well. So the first major stipulation is that not every game can be family shared. Yes, generally speaking, free-to-play games are excluded from family sharing. Like, yeah, duh, everyone can get the game for free. But it is worth mentioning that sometimes free-to-play games sell DLC, and generally speaking, DLC is shared in family sharing, along with the base game, so it actually makes more sense when you think about it. Also, some games that are claimed for free on Steam via a promotion, and yes, while these are rare, sometimes they do happen. Like during lockdown, Orange juice. was free to claim for a week. These copies of the game are in fact unable to be family shared. Had you bought the game normally, it could have been family shared, but because it wasn't bought normally and Steam ran the promotion, it isn't family shareable. This limitation, however, doesn't apply to game keys you may get outside of Steam. Like if you were to say, win a giveaway on Twitter, and enter those games into your account, then those games can still be family shared. There's also a limit to how often you can change your family units. The Steam family sharing program is actually meant for families. And of course, they don't want you joining random families all nilly-willy just so you can play free games. So there is a wait. There's a one-year cooldown period starting from when you join a new family. Of course, if you were to stay in that family for longer than a year and then all of a sudden you have to switch families, then you can do so instantly. But this prevents people from, say, joining a family for like a week, leaving and then joining another family instantly. If they were to join a family for a week and then leave, they'd still have to wait the remaining 51 weeks of the year. Doing it this way benefits families that say are going through a rough time. I don't know, maybe you got divorced or something. And the final stipulation is in fact surrounding cheating. If someone in your family unit gets banned from a game, you also get banned from that game as well. What this means is that you really shouldn't be family sharing with someone that you don't know you can trust 100%. And yes, this includes your brother or sister or whatever. If they cheat and they get caught and they're banned, and you get banned too. Now obviously this means that I would never advise family sharing with, I don't know, just some random friend on the internet because you never know if he's gonna cheat or not. So if your brother is a known active cheater, then hit him in the back of the head. Make sure he doesn't cheat. So yeah, we talked a lot about this new Steam family sharing system. So how do we enroll? Well, thankfully you can do this entire process on your Steam Deck. First, you'll need to opt into the beta branch of Steam OS. Hopefully in the future, once Valve rolls out this feature to stable branch, you won't need to switch. So now that that's done, you'll first want to establish your family. You can access all the family sharing stuff by going into account details. Just press your profile picture in the top right corner of the Steam Deck interface. Now you'll need to click on to family management. You'll need to use a trackpad to navigate this area as it doesn't support controller input. 
now you have the option of either joining a family or creating a family. In this example, we're going to create our own family. You can name the family whatever you want it to be. After naming your family, press the create button and you now have a family. And as you can see there, you'll see that you've joined your own family as an adult role. And you can only have six people in a family unit. You can invite your Steam friends to be part of your family. In this example though, I'm gonna invite my alternate account. You can invite them as an adult or as a child. And so I'm gonna invite my alternate account as an alternate adult as well. So now that this invite has been sent, how would you accept an invite if you were to say, be invited as part of your family? The other person would need to go into family management and then press join a family. The other person should see your invite in there, and they would have to press accept. Just don't accept family requests from people you don't know. So yes, as you can see here, my alternate account got an invite from my main account. And press accept, and then press confirm, and you'll see that you have one more step. You'll have to once again confirm this on the Steam mobile app in case you have a Steam mobile app set up. If you do have the Steam app, the process of joining is pretty simple. Click on the notification tab. In your notification tab, you should see one confirmation needed. Click on that, and then you'll be taken to this page. Join the Steam family. Press this button right here, and then you'll be taken to this page. And of course, to accept any requests, you'll want to press the join button. Now you should be enrolled in the Steam Family Share. As of the making of this video, it's still beta branch exclusive, but hopefully it'll come to the stable branch pretty soon. In the library menu, you should see all the games that you have access to. As of the making of this video, there is no way to separate your own games from your own family's games. There's no way to sort by libraries, so to speak. You do, however, have this option in the desktop version of Steam. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier in the video, but basically, offline mode no longer restricts your family shared games. You can access all of your family shared games even in offline mode. It used to be that if you went into Steam offline mode, you lost access to your family shared titles. But this is no longer the case, and now offline mode is immediately more usable. Also added to the Steam family share overhaul is parental controls. I'm not going to go over every single type of parental control, but essentially you can control what games your kids play, you can buy games for your kids automatically, you also have access to your kids' playtime graphs, and you can restrict certain Steam features like Steam Workshop, or Steam Friends, or even, I don't know, Steam Communities? If you're a parent wondering why I'm not covering this, well, it's pretty simple really. You're the parent. You should read the literature yourself. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high-tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high-tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.